Hope Sandoval's ethereal voice has been with us since the early 90s, first known to us as the lead singer for Mazzy Star. And Colin Kisoig's drumming since the mid-80s in his band, My Bloody Valentine. The two started working together in the early aughts as Hope Sandoval and The Warm Inventions. And since, they've slowly released three full-length albums and three EPs, each one feeling like a long-awaited gift. Hi, I'm Carmel Holt. Their latest, Until the Hunter, came out in November of 2016, the follow-up to their 2009 album, Through the Devil Softly. Once again, the new collection was well worth the wait, as was their long overdue first visit to our studios. We begin this very special FUV Live with Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions with a performance of a song from their 2001 debut, Bavarian Fruit Bread. Here's Suzanne, live on WFUV. Suzanne's waiting at your doorway But all she does is waste your time And she looks just like my sister But she feels just like my man And here I overflow She pulls aside a four-leaf clover And makes me feel right on my own Susan It's Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions live in Studio 8, 90.7 FM and WFUV.org. The new album is called Until the Hunter. 
There we get treated to a song from the debut, which is really cool, going back to Bavarian Fruit Bread. Uh, welcome to WFUV, you guys. Thanks Hi. so much for coming in. Um, so I was I was saying to you um, before, I was so excited to, um, to have you here to talk about the new record, but awesome to start with something from the first, because it's our first chance to talk to you, and um, it's long overdue. How did this project come into existence? How did the two of you meet? Um, we met in London back in, was it, 97. I was at a gig. Strange, it was actually Deb in my, my band. It was her other band. And Snow Pony. Snow Pony. But I don't know if you know them. So I went to the gig and um, I saw William Reed was there and we met them on and off touring in various times. I was like, oh, that's William. And he, he was with Hope. He was going out with Hope at the time. And, and I think uh, it was William that pointed me out to Hope. Yeah. And I said, you better introduce me to him before <laughs> the evening is over. And uh, William's quite shy, so he didn't really want to. And I mm. insisted. I had to meet him. And it, it turned out that you knew my music, mm. too. So. Yeah, yeah. I was a big, I was a huge fan. You're a huge Matthew Sar fan. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, that's funny. Mm. And so, what what was it for you, Hope, that made you like say, "I have to meet Colm"? Well, he's one of the most amazing drummers. Yeah, uh, there's yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I went for an audition with Hope in a William studio, and uh, she had, had a bunch of people there: Mitsuo from mm-hmm. Cocteau Twins and some other people. And uh, had a big party. Yeah, I, <laughs> unfortunately, I, I made the mistake of um, accepting some of William's joint uh-huh. before we started playing. Yeah, and I was so strong, I got cr- incredibly stoned. Uh huh. I couldn't play. I was in this trapped bubble of any sound I made was gigantic in my head. I was like, I was, this music was super slow <laughs> that I wasn't used to slow music at all, either. So, so I'd be hitting the cymbal and we go, and resonate. <laughs> <laughs> I hit somebody else and I'm like, oh Jesus that's, that's out of time and I, I think I got one minute where I was actually I got it right and then Hope clocked that she noticed it and she came over and oh, that seems about right so this is London 1997 yeah. Yeah, around yeah and so at what point did you say hey we, we've got something special here we need to do a project um, Colin played us some of his music that he was doing on his own, just completely on his own, and it was amazing. It was stunning, beautiful. Me and William actually started fighting over him. Like, <laughs> Colin would come over, we'd have wine, we'd listen to his music, Colin would leave, and William would say, I want to work with him. And I'd say, well, I'm the one that thought of it. I want to work with him. So <laughs> that's how it happened. And then... Colm's sister lives in San Francisco, or used to live in San Francisco. So he started coming over to California, and we started hanging out. And then, yeah, we just started jamming and playing music together, and it just kind of came started from there, really. And that's where we got the first album, which was, I think, 2001? Yeah, that's right, yeah. For Bavarian Breadfruit? Yeah. Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions are guests at 90.7 FM and WFUV.org. The new album is called Until the Hunter. Let's get into this next song. Um, do you, either one of you want to set up day discuss? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a very delicate kind of finger-picky kind of song. It's, it's kind of influenced by Fred Neal. Um, maybe here. I'm very glad that you said that because it always reminded me of the Dolphins song. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Dolphins is said it is sung in the song. Mm. That's a little nod to Fred. All right. Well, here it is. It's Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions live on WFUV.
just begun. Let the dolphins hear. You'll fall asleep under a tree. You'll think of me. Won't you linger on? Make my branches strong. Till I know I can shake you. There's Day Disguise, live in Studio 8, 90.7 FM and WFUV.org. Our guest today, Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions, and I'm talking with Hope and with Calm. Let's get to talking about Until the Hunter. Um, It's got so many amazing stories. Like, it feels like there's a bunch of stuff that happened around the making of this album that were almost magical happenstance can you tell us a little bit about where you guys ended up to record the new album? On the last tour that we did for the previous record, we found this place to rehearse in, uh, to stay in. It's a round tower. It was in Dublin. And uh, these towers are called Martello Towers. They were built uh, in defense against Napoleon in 1805, I think. Wow. And what's great about them is that they're eight foot thick walls. No sand gets in or, or out, so it's completely soundproofed and isolated as well on the coast, as well in beautiful locations. And I just love the sound that was in there. It was just an ama- it's an amazing room because it's a circular 
room and the reflections don't really bounce around too much. There's a reverb that goes for about three seconds and dies really naturally. So it's a, you know, circular rooms, st- stone rooms are amazing to record in. We set the whole band in there and we just put the amps behind couches and stuff like that. It's kind of, you know, gobos. And just the reverb in the room was great. The drum kit, my little drum kit sounded amazing there. I said, oh, my drum kits never sound as good as this. <laughs> and we had Hope up in the kitchen um, with her headphones on. Where else are they going to put me? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually really nice. The kitchen had the view. Yeah, it was so 360 uh, was really you know, windows beautiful. around it. And this view of the ocean. And some of the visuals we have for this tour were filmed from that those windows. So when you guys get together to do a record... Um, I was really curious about this because it almost seems like Hope Sandoval and the warm inventions are in like a seven year cycle now, like seven or eight, mm-hmm. right? Ish. Seems to fall in that way. I mean, obviously you guys have other things that you're doing. So you're doing this when you find the time, mm. but I guess it's a two part question. One is at what point do you like, who makes the first call? It's like, hey, Hope, it's Colm, it's time to do a new record, or Hope, hey, you know, it's time to make a new record, or, like, does each time kind of happen organically on its own? I think it's usually me that says, should we make another record? Yeah, and, you know, I'd turn up my guitar and say, hey, Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's that easy. I, I wouldn't say it's easy. I mean, we do have our other bands, so... We go back and forth. Yeah. Do you write for this project specifically, or does it all happen when you guys are together? When was the material for this album written? A lot of it was just uh, pretty recent, you know, a year before the album came out, I guess. Most of it. Yeah. Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions here at 90.7 FM and WFUV.org. The new album is called Until the Hunter. Before we get back to music, um, I would love to talk about, I was saying about all the kind of like happenstance and kind of fun, magical things that happened for this record, um, including the towers and the location, but also the musicians who you collaborated with. Um, can you tell us a little bit, for example, about the artist general that you got? <laughs> <laughs> to Michael. Do? Um I was walking in downtown Berkeley, and I just heard this guy playing this beautiful, I mean, I don't even know how to describe it, just like the most beautiful sound. And I went back and took his card, put some money in his his hat, and Googled him, and was even more blown away. And when Colum came back to California... I turned Colum on to him, and Colum loved him. And we tried to get in touch with him. He didn't really respond to our emails mm-hmm. or our calls. Well, eventually we, we got through to him, and you know, he was you know, very keen on just coming up and jamming. And... Yeah. So can you describe a little bit about the instruments that he's playing? I mean, I know a picture's worth this, a thousand words, and I actually mm-hmm. did Google him, and it's amazing. Like, he has sort of a dulcimer style. Yeah. That's right. He has this, yeah, this, it's kind of like dulcimer, and he he's made these hammers. Usually, dulcimers play with hammers, but he created this new thing called a bow hammer. He made these bows on his fingers, like Edward Scissorhands, hands, mm-hmm. like huge long fingernails. But they were bow hammers. He called them, so you can bow the strings and hammer them at the same time. So you can hammer and bow. So you're basically kind of playing like these kind of cello type stuff, and then hammering as well. So it's it's had that dulcimer sound with kind of crazy strings in it. So it's like each finger has a hammer. Wow. Which is pretty incredible. Mm. Where do we hear him on the record? Maybe in the the lead track, right? Yeah, Into the Trees. He's that on that track he's playing a gong with a what was it the kitchen utensil? It's not an egg mixer, but it's um, Yeah, it's like a whisker or something. It's 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 like a a little little claw, you know. It's not a spatula, but it's sort of like a spatula. It's got four fingers, okay. and he had rubber rubber ends on it. So you'd be scraping it like a little hand, like this little robot hand yeah. going down. And he was so ground. happy. He was so excited because it actually had a really, really intense, gorgeous sound. Okay. And he also he played a thing called the nickel harpo. He played like an auto harp, but it's a violin kind of thing. It's a string instrument, and it looks kind of like an auto harp, but it's it's got strings, and you you bow it. 
that's the kind of string sounds that you hear towards the end of the song. Did he come to the towers, or did, where did you record him? He did not come to the towers. Okay. We yeah, those, recorded, we recorded him uh, in Berkeley. Yeah, at Fantasy Studio. Oh, wow. So. Is that primarily the two places that Until the Hunter was recorded? Yeah. And then your other collaborators on the album, um, I know we're about to get to the song that had Kurt Vile mm-hmm. uh, doing the duet. I'm really curious about how you guys connected with him. We fell in love with his music. It was when we went to that drum shop in Dublin. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, they were playing Kurt Vile, and we asked you, who's that? You know, that sounded really good. And yeah, then, we asked the guy, who is this? Because they were playing just nothing but Kurt that mm. afternoon. That's how we got introduced to him. And we thought he would be perfect for that song. Did you initially conceive of that song as a duet? No, mm. no, no. It wasn't until I started listening to it, you know, the demo of it, and thinking, hmm, this could be a duet. And he was amazing, you know. He, We weren't sure if he'd be into it, you know. Mm. Like some people, they don't want to do that sort of thing, you know. Yeah, and you had all these cool sounds as well, like the weird little humming noises and stuff. Yeah, cat sounds. and <laughs> It's nice. There's a lot of that on this record, by the way. You know, I just want to compliment you on how each album kind of progressively feels more playful and more open and has like, like this boundary pushing thing. Like even though it's consistent in sound, there's stuff to kind of explore and sink your teeth into sonically. Um, I don't know if that resonates for you, but I mean, especially that opening track, which is probably my favorite on the album, and it's like over nine minutes long. Mm. Do you guys feel that? Do you feel that, you know, the sound of the band, even though there's like all this time that goes between it, maybe that serves the purpose that has kind of like expanded on on the sound where you began it? Yeah, we we like to experiment, and we're into loads of different types of music. From regular, you know, songwriting to like Sun Ra or Can <laughs> or Faust or something. It's good to throw just your elements in there, but not consciously. You're, we're just being free. You know, it's just whatever happens, happens. It's not like a conscious decision not to be weird. So. Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions here on WFUV. We have another amazing player here with us today. I want to make sure we don't leave him out. Can you introduce us to Dave? Dave Brennan. He's an amazing guitarist, mm. old friend. He was amazing on, on the tour. He really you know, played yeah. amazingly. We've had a pretty good time on the, yeah. on the tour. Yeah, it's been a quite crazy tour. You know? <laughs> we had a, kind of a baptism by fire kind of thing. Oh my yeah. God, I know. I heard about that in the mm. wildfires. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So it was a close call. You know, we were getting prepared, prepared to run off the bus and jump the bus. Yeah. Because... The only way out was to reverse. So we were reversing this tour bus down a country road with a trailer on it. And it was wobbling from side to side. And we could see the flames just chasing us. On catching. each side of the road. Mm. What? And we didn't know that there were fires. We mm. played the show. This was in wine country. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sonoma. Sonoma. Uh-huh. We, and we played the show. And nobody said anything. But there was a crazy windstorm. Mm. I mean, to the point where you could not see anything. Yeah. That's how bad it was. Dust was everywhere. I had beaches on my drum kit. I was looking at my cymbal and thinking, oh, there's a beach there. And it's moving around and there's Sand, a beach on my yeah. tongue. My glockenspiel was full of dust. Mm. My harmonica, I mm. mean, it was, it was crazy. Yeah, the barn doors were banging. It was just <laughs> crazy. You know? But it was sort of cool. It was yeah, like it was a cool. haunting experience. Yeah, yeah it was but. like the witches are out to play tonight. You know? mm. It was wild. But we didn't know about the fires until mm. we were in our bus. I was already asleep in my bunk, and the tour manager came over to my bunk and said, get up, get dressed, and get ready to run <laughs> off the bus. There's mm. fires. I just thought, oh, no. I mean, I wasn't surprised, but it was so scary. Mm. What a way to start a tour. Yeah. I know. I know. Wow. <laughs> Well, thankfully, you guys got out of that um, unscathed. Yeah, mm. yeah we were yeah. traumatized for. You I know, bet a few you were. <laughs> Came within inches, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so no, many people mm. lost their homes. Mm. And, I mean, it's a lot of people died just well. terrible. I was narrow escape. So as we we turned around, we managed to find a driveway. Our tour manager, we, we ran back, and he found a driveway. We reversed into the driveway, and then turned around. But as, as we turned around, we drove by a, a police car that had was crushed by a tree that had fallen down. We had to scrape the bus past this f- 
fallen tree with who knows, you know, what will happen to that policeman in that car. You know? yeah, it's like harrowing. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, you think uh, touring is a glamorous life, but man. (laughs) (laughs) Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions here at 90.7 FM and WFUV.org. And in that case, I guess the Hot Inventions, Until the Hunter, is the name of the new album. Um, We were talking about this song before, and uh, love it if you guys would play Let Me Get There. Yeah. 
Let me get there. It's Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions from the album Until the Hunter and now live in Studio A and such a beautiful version of that and actually more similar to the Son of a Lady version. Yeah. And you guys have that new EP too, which is quite a treat so fast after Until the Hunter. Well, it's been super fun to have you guys here and I hope that, uh, I mean, I don't want to resist the seven-year cycle, but hopefully we won't have to wait as long <laughs> for the next one. Do you guys have any any plans for working on something new yet? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> but yet. hopefully it'll be sooner than seven years. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. Thanks. Hope Sandoval and the Warm Inventions. Our guests on today's FUV Live. Their latest album is called Until the Hunter, and it's out now. You can listen and watch today's show, along with many other exclusive conversations and performances, in the FUV vault at WFUV.org. This session was engineered by Jim O'Hara and produced by me, Elisa Ali. Thanks so much for listening. This is 90.7 WFUV in New York.